Hey, what's up guys? It's your host Lopez, and I just want to say thank you for tuning into this episode today. If you're on Facebook and want to show some support with a like on the page, you can find it by going to facebook.com slash behind closed doors podcast or just searching behind closed doors podcast. You can also find it on Twitter at the BCD podcast and on Instagram at the behind closed doors podcast. Last but not least, follow the podcast on Spotify by searching Behind Closed Doors in the podcast section to see all the amazing upcoming interviews I have to come. Every Sunday, I post a picture of a band with a hint of who my next guest is. Then on Tuesday, I post a brief clip from our video interview with a good highlight of our conversation we had. And lastly, post the new episode up on Spotify every Thursday morning. Now, on to the episode. have darren miller xcky current 96 bitter beings how the fuck are you man i'm good i'm really good yeah just want to start by saying thanks for taking the time to talk with me tonight no problem where you uh where are you currently living at nowadays santa clarita california california yeah where did you grow up at uh, half of uh, my half of my childhood was in Marlton, New Jersey, and the other half was in Westchester. Okay. Pennsylvania. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to like get a different lighting thing because I'm glaring or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, basically, that's it. What's currently going on with you guys as far as lockdown over there in California? Is it pretty strict? It's strict. We just got um, restaurant outside eating finally opened up again i mean it's bad it, it's it, it's bad uh my daughter got it my drummer got it tim um yeah i think i had it because i had like bad trouble breathing a little bit but usually if i when i get sick it only lasts like a day so i i, I don't know but I, we all tested negative and, sh- and my daughter had it, it wasn't that bad so hmm. we we got by it <laughs> and now she's all good to She's yeah, good to, yeah, that's good. Are they in school now, or how's how is that playing out? Because I know over here, man, it's it's like one day they're going to school, and the next week they're off. Then you know, it's just it's like no school even exists anymore. Yeah, they're not doing. They're not in the building at all. They haven't been into school in, since March of last year. No it's kidding. All, all online, yeah, a computer. And I was talk with man. I was talking with my buddies. It's like that's really going to put an impact on them, you know, being an upcoming generation because they're not going to have any real social skills when it comes to anything, you know? I worry about that. I actually, it's funny you mentioned that because I do worry about that a lot. And um, so we actually kind of force, I don't want to say play dates, but my daughters are fine. They're, they're always going somewhere, which is probably why my daughter caught it. And I try to keep them home, but then it comes to a point where you're caught between wanting to be responsible and not getting not getting them near it. And then there's another party that says, well, just sitting around and not doing anything isn't really living. No. Not yeah, living. it's it's tough, man. You know, it's like saying uh, you can either die or you can <laughs> be in this dungeon with a chain strapped to your ankle for the rest of your life. You know, you got to make a decision at one point. Especially for these kids, you know, they're not going to, they're not getting the, you know, the whole childhood atmosphere, just sitting at home on a computer, watching their friends on the screen, you know, like if that was me when I was younger, dude, I'd fucking go nuts. Cause I'm so used to my, you know, running around and just doing my thing. And well, you know, that, that they were doing that before COVID anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I try to get my son to interact and he does, he, he interacts with a lot of, He's playing tennis. He plays basketball. He doesn't overdo it on the on the video games. You know, he likes the video game thing. He's really good at it too. He's like 
somewhat of a of a of an of a entity online. He's, <laughs> he's a pro uh, Fortnite player. Is he really? Yeah, he's really good at it. Jeez, I never got into that, but I know that dude. There's a lot of people that get into that game, especially yeah. you know, there's a lot of streamers and whatnot on Twitch. But that's cool, man. That's cool that he's got his own things going already. That's how old is he now? He's gonna be twelve. And he's already got that going for him. That's crazy. Yep. So you like to play guitar and you like to sing. What influences got you to start doing that? Um, well, Kiss was my first because they were image strength. Like the strength of their whole thing was the image. And um, I was two. So I saw, I saw a poster in my cousin's room. They're trying to get me to watch this other movie, but I was kept looking at all these posters he had in his room of Ace really blowing up his guitar. And I was like, whatever that is, I want to do that. <laughs> and so I got a really, really quick start at two years old. And um, I took some piano lessons because back then, every parent made you take piano lessons. Didn't really like it that much. Finally got a guitar at around seven or eight. Started taking lessons and... Uh, I just, it, it's my obsession. What was that guitar you got? It was like, uh, my mom's best friend had a son who lived across the street from me and he was taking up guitar, but he didn't like it. He got, he got bored with it really easily. And my mom bought the guitar off of him and it was some kind of generic, it was like a Washburn, like, but it was really generic. It didn't really have a brand name. I think it might've been 50 fifty dollars oh yeah one of those deals then <laughs> yeah it was like i think it was for for kids and i think it was for maybe kids that didn't really they didn't really expect you to to stick with it right yeah definitely so um yeah so i picked up that that fucker and i, I never let it go ever did you, do you did you keep it or did you sell it eventually oh it's it, it I, uh, I well i traded it in at, at some music store and i got a like like a blue, like uh, kind of, it was kind of like a Jackson shape V, like a, I don't know shit about guitars. And <laughs> I, I know that that sounds really fucking weird, but I, I really don't. Well, I, I don't like the technical aspects of a guitar. I don't know anything about pickups. I don't know anything about um, how to set the, t set the tone so that um, the intonation is good. You know, if, it, if my guitar intonation is out, I just grab another one. I, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, I, I, I don't know all that stuff. It's like, you know, being a, being a race car driver, but not knowing how to change the tire, you know, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much how I am with that shit. So I, I just remember that it was like blue and it was kind of like a Jackson, Jackson guitar, but it wasn't a Jackson. What kind of guitar really? are you playing on now? I'm using esoteric guitars. Are you endorsed by them? Yeah, they're a nice. fairly relatively new um, company based out here in California. And I, I hooked up with them. Somebody got in touch with me and said, check these out. You know, we think they'd be good for you. And I, I did a whole video on, on, their, on their website and it's online of like the first, the first night of me uh, playing one and talking about it and stuff. And yeah, they're really, really nice guitars. And they're always back order, man. They're selling them out like crazy. So yeah, I mean, it's it's a great company, and um, I don't have to, you know, chase them around and and beg or ask. Right. You know, How'd really... you get endorsed with those guys? Well, a guy um, that was in uh, a guy that was like, a fan of mine from a long time ago got involved in A and Ring at a uh, at Esoteric. His name was Dave Sada, and he became a member of my other band, Foreign Objects this band and um then he got me in touch with esoterics like president or C ceo ryan cook and ryan cook wanted me to play him and i was more than willing because i thought they were great they play really well like you can get all kinds of like it's like really smooth they're smooth guitars and um naturally anybody that's endorsed by a product is going to sit there and be like this will clear your skin up. Look what right. it did to me, you know. <laughs> I, I don't do that. If I would, if I had a shitty endorsement, I would probably not talk about it at all, <laughs> or I would, I would look elsewhere. But um, no, I'm, I've been with them for like six years, and I'm really, really, really proud to be part of their roster. So, now, have you had any competitors trying to get you, like, trying to steal you away from them? You know, 
I am so sick of spam that when I get an email, I get like 40 spam emails a day. And if I see one that says like, we're interested in having you check out our guitars or something like that, I already have it, guitars. So I don't, I don't really, it's hard to get a hold of me unless you know where to find me. So I, I maybe possibly, but I haven't, I haven't answered anybody on that. I get a lot of emails about several different topics and if, if it seems like spam or if it seems like not really legit, then I, you know. Oh, for right sure. Up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't blame you, man. There's too much. Uh, I get a bunch of spam telling like not even really emails. I just get a bunch of spam calls lately just about like my, my warranties going void on my brand new car. And yeah. I have a fucking 94 suburban, like that's brand new, you know? <laughs> right. So, you know, what, uh, that's the only reason why we have a landline, you know, we still have a landline for, for creditors and spammers, <laughs> scammers, creditors, and spammers. Now, um, yeah, man, let's jump into the CKY days, the good CKY days. When did that form and how did that form? Oh, 96, um, 1996, I was a, a sophomore, junior, depending on what you would think of my GPA, but um, <laughs> just uh, started a band, started, broke up, found another band, got, the, got Jess as the drummer, then just started working and doing it. I mean, I, that's about it. You know, we, I was, I've always been writing songs. I've been writing songs since I was like nine, you know, starting just lyrics, you know, and then I would try to sing them without music. And my parents were like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it was just a lot of working, a lot of playing and uh, you, this person, you meet that person, that person meets this, this person introduces you to that person. It just all, it all works out. So yeah, I mean, those, those were, those were fun days. They were fun days, but you know, did it, did it for 15 years and then every good thing comes to an end. Yeah. Now what's the story behind the name Camp Kill Yourself? Well, I was a fan of my bloody Valentine and I, I thought that band names really sucked back then, which they did like Flyleaf, <laughs> yeah. Three Doors Down, <laughs> shit like that. So I said it would be cooler to have a movie title as a band name. And that's what my bloody Valentine did, except they did take a title from an actual movie. I wanted to take the title from a movie that didn't exist yet. So Sleepaway Camp was one of my favorite movies. And then Kill Yourself was just an offensive thing to say. You put the three things together, there you have it. That is, that's pretty brilliant thinking right there. That's <laughs> Funny enough, we never got any like, like bullshit for it. Like nobody ever like pro protested or complained about it, you know? It was pretty smooth. How did that adapt into Bam's, uh, Bam and Chris Rabbit and all of them's uh, CKY videos? Did they just kind of take the idea because Jess was Bam's brother, or how did that come? It was it was all of us. We were a group of kids in high school. I mean, every every school every school has them. You know, the group of kids that, that just <laughs> gather in one area of the of the hallway. You know, <laughs> yeah. And, um, <laughs> We all like enjoyed doing things that were either embarrassing or artistic or creative. So I was sitting in a Moray's pizza shop. I came up with the name Camp Kill Yourself. Bam had done a, a clip in a video called Jump Off a Building that everybody, we were getting a lot of mail for the song. It was an early version of Close Yet Far for the song. And um, Bam, we were getting a lot of mail about that music, uh, his part in that, vi that video. And then I said, well, if they like your, if they like your part so much, maybe somebody will, will let us do our own video, our own full length thing. So we sat in his bedroom and we just said, we'll just call the band and the thing CKY. And that was it. Now the song with the most streams on Spotify, I don't know if you're a Spotify guy or an iTunes guy, but um, on Spotify right now, the most played song is 96 Quite Bitter Beings. It's at 42 million streams right now, which is huge. Did you ever expect that song to be so popular? And what do you think made that song so popular? Well, uh, I can tell you that it wasn't anything exceptionally. I didn't at the time think it was anything exceptionally brilliant. I thought that it was, there was something there. I mean, it was enough for me to call in sick uh, for work to stay home, to stay in, in the rehearsal and, and, and finish it, you know, because Back then, like, you have to record stuff so you could remember it. So we had to record a demo of it. And, um, you know, it was just, a, it's a riff. 
it's one of my riffs. I have like thousands. And I think the one reason why that one stuck out so much is because it was played and sampled a lot on MTV. Oh, yeah. You know, and any any song that gets that treatment, you know, isn't is going to be it's going to last. So, yeah, it's a classic. And that's why I I I love the whole Hellview theme of everything that that, he, that I did. And I wanted to just call it 96 Bitter Beans, you know. Is there a story behind that song? Just my imagination. Just you know? all off the top of the head then. Having seen so many horror movies and 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 getting so many different images and not remembering the names of the movies and stuff like that. Like I the idea is just you I shut my eyes and I can see shit, you know. So yeah, it was just it's just, you know, I'm, I love horror and I love to create in within that realm. So we were signed to a major label and we were on MTV before we signed a major label. It's just good timing, good music, and the rest is history. Yeah, so yeah, yes. 40, 42 million. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. That's uh. did you expect it to, for me to say that much? Honestly, I, I didn't know. I never thought about it. Um, I, I wonder occasionally, I, you know, I, th I thought about like how many times is that or any of the songs, been, but you know, I don't, it's over so many years and it's been so long yeah. ago. So, so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, that song's going to play, you know, people are going to listen to that song. And, forever. All, yeah, yeah, it's definitely still making, be. I'm still making new ones. So there's no, there's no time limit or, you know, or, or anything like that. I'm, I'm still like focusing on, on getting better at everything that I, that I do and, you know, not looking to the past. So I, I feel like I'm still competing with myself, but I think that the, that I'm winning more than the old me, you know, I'm beating the old me, Yeah. but you know, a lot of the options back then, like the MTV and the radio, that stuff is all, gone. it's so, definitely different. Yeah. Unless you're going to, so you it, know. yeah, it's all word of mouth now. So good music is always, is always going to be heard if the, when, because of word of mouth. That's the best you can do as far as promotion is just, one guy tells another guy tells another tells another eventually yeah so yeah so runner up to that is actually flesh into gear which has eight million streams on spotify so for the same instance um is there a story behind that or is it just the same type of scenario where you kind of just came up with it and thought it sounded good and just put it out exactly yep that that was it it was a demo called sinking fast there's a minute and 52 seconds i think it was used in the second video because we didn't have any new material. We were working on a second record. We didn't have any new material, so we used the demo version, and everybody loved it, but I thought it was embarrassing because I didn't do... You know, the singing on that demo is just me trying to remember the song, you know? <laughs> so finally, it, it got finished, and uh, it was it was a, a hit. Yeah. <laughs> It was like the top, it was in like top 30, you know, mainstream rock tracks at some point. But actually, Familiar Realm was a bigger hit than Flesh in a Year. Really? Yeah. But those numbers are just, they don't mean anything. That's my wife's favorite song is Familiar Realm. The, I mean, think about it. Song. 96 Quite Bitter Beings was never even a single. <laughs> it was never released or played on the radio. Yeah. It was. I think it's just something that's, that, that is it's timeless you know I, I i try to make the music that i make timeless so that people don't look back and say oh god remember that that was so lame you know <laughs> and i think that a lot of bands are having that that problem right now that's why they no longer exist you know so if you make your your music credible and it's not really even like an opinion like some people are like this, this song's good you know this this is a good song it'll always be a good song not true you know there's a lot of songs that age and yeah, they become dated. and even though they were number one hits, like Warren's Cherry Pie or something, a huge yeah. hit. And I, I like Warren, you know, I like I like that. But Cherry Pie is one of the songs that is a classic, but its biggest success was when it came out at that time. I interviewed so, uh, the drummer from Finger Eleven, like my second interview on here, and he was from the band Finger Eleven, obviously, and their their number one song was Paralyzer, and at that time it was huge, but. Now, you know, everybody hears that song and they're like, oh, my God, I've, I've heard that song a million times. And I'm not saying that it's a bad song, you know, 
it's just the same scenario like warrant with cherry pie and don't yeah. stop believing with journey you know it's all they have a time stamp on their songs for sure but they're all classics i mean there are yep. hit songs from you know 2002 from a band like incubus mm -hmm. that you don't hear anymore you know uh, pardon me pardon yeah. me <laughs> yeah you know, like and drive yeah anymore. yeah and like alien ant farm and stuff like that you don't really hear that stuff anymore because it, it's it's very i mean it's nostalgic i suppose but it it doesn't find too many fresh ears so i try to to stay within that realm of of my style that can grow by word of mouth and right. not just be some like right now thing and I think another thing that helped flesh into gear a lot was it was at the ending of Jackass, the movie that was, uh, I feel like that was also a good uh, promotion standard too. Cause a lot of people wouldn't seen that. And I can guarantee a lot of people at the end, you know, walking out the theaters or whatever they had to have thought, you know, either they knew CKY and they knew your voice and they're like, that's CKY. Or they were wondering who, who is this, you know? Well, we, it's interesting cause we had another song um, at the end. Hey, we had another song at the end of Jackass 3D, and that song went nowhere. Really? <laughs> what song? What song was that? It's been such it a long. It's called Afterworld. Afterworld. It was the last. It was the last thing I did. I have. A, I have a visitor. One sec. It was the last thing I did in that band for I. I uh, disappeared. Uh, I door dashed. Door Come dashed. On, <laughs> Kazi, perfect timing. <laughs> All right, I see. <laughs> a little bit of a plan, unplanned uh, COVID issue that we all have. Yeah, dude. There's like a whole list of them going on all over the world. DoorDash, Door dude. I, I'm I'm assuming with how the pandemic is going with. Door between DoorDash, Amazon, and Uber, all those people are just fucking killing it with right breaking with it in. And you know, it's really fucking pathetic to think that corporations are making money off of this. It's sick. I know it. That's what I was just literally thinking the other day that, like, not even necessarily just that, like, everything in general. Like, for example, when it first started with the whole toilet paper epidemic going on, like, that was just pretty. Pretty ridiculous. pathetic, yeah. <laughs> that is so typical of American fear, isn't it? <laughs> you have all these Karens fighting over a roll of paper towels. Dude, when what I went to that? the store, I went to the store today, and they were announcing that this was the last of the Lysol that they were getting today. And there was like a stampede of people like running to this cart full of Lysol, and it's just like, how many of you are actually going to use three cans of those Lysol within a week's period? Because they're going to either get it tomorrow or next week, you know. It was just <laughs> the hand sanitizer. I didn't, yeah. I didn't I don't touch any of that shit. It just proves that, that we're dumb. Yeah. <laughs> and we're very, dumb. we're very, we're like, uh, like cattle, man, the, whoever's in charge, whether it's the government, whether it's the, the CDC and all that, whoever's in charge of who's putting this fear in 99% of the population is like cattle. They're just being led into the field and they're willingly okay with it. Like, oh yeah, they say so. So it must be true, you know? Yeah. And it's lonely being part of the 1%, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 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 Most people will do, will, will jump as far as the, uh, the government tells them to, you know, and it's all corrupt and it's all bullshit, but I, I'm not a political person. When I start to get into politics, my heart starts to beat and I break out into a cold sweat and I get really aggravated and pissed off. So That's I try right. not to think about things <laughs> that I can't change. That is the goal to yeah. ever waste any time or opinion or give any energy to anything that you will not change. Dude, it's crazy. I'm a I'm a, I'm a local dump truck driver, and um, on the CB radio around the time there's like a week prior before election, and I dude I can't tell you how many times when I was by like a, a really big like rest area or like a, a travel center, just all the truckers going back and forth arguing, literally trying to fight each other over you know Biden this, Trump that, and it was just like, what does it matter? Like you're if you get in a fight and kick this guy's ass, is that gonna make your point relevant or is it going to change anything you know none of it matters 
<laughs> so stupid. People need to stop fighting about political shit. Yeah, I agree. It's not going to get you anywhere. You never win an argument. You never win that argument. Not no, one that. W- no one ever wins that argument. You're never going to find somebody that says, you know what? You're right. <laughs> right. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you have convinced me that Trump should have a second term. Right. Thank, thank you. I had no idea you knew that much more than I did. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work like that. It's no. back and forth and back and forth until somebody gets bored. And then, it's a yeah, waste of time. it it's is. I am so glad that you're on the same page. So glad. Ugh, I can't stand it. I can't stand reading, going on my friend, my friend's Facebooks and Instagram and they're, and they're talking about that shit. I always say, stop fucking talking about that. <laughs> Talk about something that is good news. Right. Yeah. Like eating, can, uh... even if, if, even if your one body was worth a million, if let's say you were a million people, there was a million of you and you wanted to fight something you still wouldn't be able to change it. Protesting rarely works. I know. <laughs> Never works. Never works. It just causes hate. When you Look protest, what happened like, with the, yeah, like all... with the whole George Floyd protest, what did that do? You know, racism is even stronger than it was then before that. Racism whole... is just, I mean, Will Smith, Will Smith said something that I thought was really, really smart. Racism isn't getting worse. It's just getting taped. Yeah. It's always been there and it's never going to go away because. But you used to be able to hate in private. Yep. <laughs> now everything, everybody hates in public and it's just to get some kind of attention. It's and fucked up, ain't it? What a world we're living in right now. I, I always think that every day. What I can't wait to tell my kids when they get older, they're going to read the shit that's going on in their history books and ask, you know, what was that like? Cause I was, I don't remember. And it's just, uh, be glad you don't remember because I wish I could, you know. And yeah, well, that's why it's very important to have at least a hobby or something that you're passionate about where that stuff doesn't end up taking up all your time. Yeah. God, yeah. And, and I feel bad for people that argue about that shit because it makes me realize I don't take their each, any of their sides. I never say this person has a point. I always say one of them could be right. One of them could be wrong. They could be both right and wrong. But the point is, they're not, they're doing this instead of something else. And that's what bothers me the most. And I they, never get bothered what somebody says. You know, I never get bothered about, even if it's about me, I never get bothered about what somebody says about me, good or bad. But if it's, you know, the problem is, is that instead of doing something else, they're doing that. So, and it's just so oh, no. crazy. They're so oblivious to it. And they truly in their heart think that what their what their belief is isn't just a belief. It's the truth and it's what matters and that's what it's supposed to be. And it's pretty fucked up, you know. Well, you know, perception is is the truth for a lot of people. You know, if you if somebody thinks that they're the best ice cream maker in the world, <laughs> yeah. they are until somebody tells them that they're not. And even then they still might think they are. Yeah. So perception is reality, you know? And and that's good. I think that people should have enough faith in themselves to see themselves in a position where they probably aren't what they think they are. Because those are the people that do become what they think they are. So eventually perception does become reality. And it is reality until it does. Is that how you felt with yourself with music? Yes. See? And now look at you. You're the Never doubted man. it. Never doubt it. Never doubt it. See, now going more on a positive note with the CKOI stuff again, is there a favorite music video that you guys have done before? Escape from Helvey was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did, I've done like 20 music videos. <laughs> so the first one I saw was Sporadic Movement in the back of that semi trailer. That was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. That was, that, I've, God, you just refreshed my memory. Yeah, that was crazy dangerous. <laughs> it looked no a little permission. dangerous but <laughs> we had no permission <laughs> we were driving we would like end up in the middle of the road throw the top up and then start filming and there'd be a huge <laughs> line of traffic behind us no permission no permits no license no nothing so if you guys already got busted it would probably have been a big ass deal probably but i don't think we were afraid of that i think we had a, <laughs> i think we had a plan <laughs> That's yeah. funny. That is it was dangerous funny. because like every once in a while, I, f- I think Mark Hanna was driving. Every once in a while, he would hit the brakes and we would like, you know, fall forward or backward. 
and a couple times somebody almost ended up out the back. Yeah. You know? <laughs> now, when you when you were on t- when you were on tour with CKY, what was a day like in the life for you from start to finish? So, like on a basic tour day, what was it like from sunrise to sunset for you? Well, two weeks of any tour are always exciting. After two weeks, it becomes a routine and yeah. a lot like a job. And it's hard to fight that nagging feeling of you got to do this all over again. Even if it's something you like, eventually, like to all the kids playing Fortnite, eventually they turn it off. Mm-hmm. They don't, they haven't. So it's the same thing. It's like something that you're interested in so much. You can do it so long until it becomes a routine and you just want to turn it off for a little while. But when you're on tour, you can't turn it off. So usually you look to things that can help numb you. And in my case, and 95% of every other touring musician's case, it's alcohol. (laughs) So, you know, it's like, I'm a, I'm a homebody, you know, and touring for me was very difficult. Even when I was, when I was 18 and, and I was moving from my parents' house to my girlfriend's house. I had trouble with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was like, God, it was, it was, it was just weird. It, it, it seems very foreign. I don't, I can't stand hotel rooms. They make me feel completely not at home. Oh, There's yeah. It's like some kind of phobia I have of, of hotel rooms. In fact, on the last tour, we were, we were touring in a, in a, a van and, those guys would get hotel rooms every night. I'd stay in the fucking van. I, I, don't, I don't blame you, dude. They're, I don't know what it is. I, they're too, 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 too sanitary. They don't feel like it's, it's too fake. It's it's like you're it's like you're in a move like on a movie set in a room that they plan. You know, like it's just too. I, I get what you're saying. It's just too set up to where it, they make it a little. Not too comfortable, but it's just very fake. It's a big, it's like a fake atmosphere, you know. You feel like a guest in, a, in yeah. an unwel- in an unwelcomed area, like an, an unwelcome guest, you know. I so, hear you. Plus, all like imagining all the things that have gone have gone on in that room and in that yeah. bed. Like I can't just lay on some bed. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll sleep on a pile of fucking bags and luggage before I'll sleep in a fucking flat hotel <laughs> bed. It's just I don't know. It just bugs me. I, ugh. but um, yeah but you know eventually touring becomes a routine and the this, this show is the highlight of the day and then a couple hours after the show is might be even better and then it's on to the next place see like with the whole hotel stay man we went to starved rock in illinois about three months ago in october and we went to this hotel that had these cool looking pictures of the rooms and whatnot and the reviews look pretty decent so like whatever we're gonna go there it's not that far from the actual uh starved rock park so we get there um the rooms look like shit the beds are small the rooms are small they weren't clean and then um that's better for me i like that better well the thing that got us is we found a <laughs> fucking we found a roach crawling on the wall uh so that was the we're like okay we're gonna get another room we took a picture of the roach uh showed the front desk and demanded a different room they're like Oh, we promise you, we don't have roaches here. That's just one that slipped through the cracks. So, yeah. Isn't that how they all do? Right. That's how they all come in. They just slip through the fucking crack. And there's not there's not at least 100 more crawling on your... your we uh, don't have rats. Yeah. We just let a couple in today. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're going to be out by noon. Don't worry about them. Yeah. It's like, oh, he, mu- he must have... Uh, he must have forgot to check out this morning. Don't worry. Don't mind him. We'll take care of him. He does it all the time, you know? <laughs> yeah. Anything to save their own ass, right? Yeah. And I thought that was just kind of humorous. There were, she's like, oh, it's that we pro- I can pre- reassure you we don't have roaches. So what she was pretty much saying is, damn it. He saw our problem. Of course. I mean, <clears> what <throat> other, what other argument could you possibly get? Yeah. Sorry, sir. We do have roaches. Tell your friends. <laughs> right. Well, uh, everybody yeah. has to say shit to save their own ass unless they're man enough to admit the truth yeah. and yeah I, um now for you with cky what or just any tour in general really what's the craziest thing that you've seen or that's happened to you guys on tour god <laughs> every day i mean i don't i there's some that i can think of that i don't want anyone to know and then there's some that i can think of that aren't as good as others so it's like just if you think think if think of something that could happen and it probably happens 
That's all I can say. I really don't remember. I don't ever really go over tour stories that much. I mean, you would have to give me a specific category. You know, tour, tour stories are are ridiculous. Things that happen on, on tour are ridiculous. And they're so ridiculous that I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't want to or be comfortable putting it out there yeah. <laughs> for everybody to hear because it, it's not always something to be proud of. <laughs> but you get so fucking burn out sometimes on tour you end up doing fucked up things and fucked up things tend to happen to you so i'll put it in a book one day but i'm gonna need a lot of people to refresh my memory because i can't remember most of it yeah <laughs> now what was the reasoning behind your departure from cky uh it started to just there's a million reasons and now, again think of one and it's probably true i was drinking too much i was making myself sick I, did, I didn't, I saw the shows getting smaller, less tickets. Um, I saw uh, things were starting to cost a lot more. Um, we weren't getting along. I mean, it was, it was easier to put up with each other when we were being, when we were successful, but yeah. it got harder to put up with each other when we were on the line. And I just felt like wow. we had kind of, you, we had kind of had our time and it, things weren't gonna get bigger. I don't like to be a part of a sinking ship. Yeah. I'd rather get on like, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So that's basically it. I mean, the same old reasons. We'll just go with irreconcilable differences. <laughs> Simple as <laughs> musical, that. Musical differences. Yeah. But it's everything, you know, it's everything. I, yeah, I, I didn't really necessarily really hear like, this happened or that happened that's why i figured i'd ask you directly and get it clear from from you you know so um besides so besides that you're currently still in 96 bitter beings yes how's that going for you You guys got anything coming up or what's what's going on with you musically awesome 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 we put out the album campaign in 2018 and went on tour for it and did really really well um we finished the album Synergy Restored, which has been sitting for a while. We finally signed a record deal for that. And you know what I'm waiting on? Art. Art. Artwork. <laughs> I cannot settle on, a, on an album cover. It's really difficult. So I'm trying to, to get the art together. And then after that, you know, we're going to be working on... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm recording all the time. So we're re-recording stuff. I'm recording new stuff. Uh, still even fine-tuning the Synergy record. Every once in a while, I'll go in and I'll be like, you know what, I don't like that word. I'm going to change it. I'll go <laughs> in and do do the line again, you know. So I just want everything to be perfect when it's pre finally presented. So I'm just really working on getting the best artwork. And I'm, I'm working with an artist, and hopefully we'll have that soon. For sure, man. But COVID yeah. is causing a problem with that because yeah. he's backed up. He has so much... Um, going on and like you, you can't like the part of the concept for the artwork that i had was that a group of people are doing a certain thing and he's having trouble getting people because of the pandemic he's having trouble getting the people together in a group mm -hmm. so he can't take he can't take photos of groups of people right now so gotcha oh yeah that makes sense and so i'm looking for you know basically looking for artwork so anybody that's out there has artwork and it's cool Send it your way. How can send they get a hold of me. you and send it to you? Just on Facebook or? Facebook and email and Instagram and all that shit and what have you. So you guys covered Michael Jackson's Beat It. Why did you yeah. decide to cover that song? Well, we used to play it a lot on tour. And uh, I figured let's just do our own version of it. And it came out really good. I had heard that somebody else had done it, but. I mean, it's beat it. Who cares? It's, yeah. It's a classic song. Speaking of timeless, you know, that song will never age. I mean, it's yeah. obviously 80s, but it's always going to be a classic song. So, And the Jackson 5, they're actually from a town by me called Gary, Indiana. That's only about 40 minutes from where I live, and it's very run down now. They used to have a lot of monumental stuff about the Jackson 5, actually, from over there. But now it's literally just the armpit of Chicago. <laughs> That's crazy. Probably wasn't that back then, too. It was, It was. I guess, back in the day, I've it was heard like some a crazy city. 
I've heard some crazy stories about the Jacksons. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, do yeah. you guys have any other plans to cover any other songs in the future? Well, we have covered a few. Um, when we did the campaign album that was funded by a campaign, which two words, campaign, and then C-A-M-P-A-I-G-N, campaign, uh, one of the perks was that you tell us what you want to record. So we got a lot of uh, covers requests and uh, that was part of the campaign you could you could um, support us and the recording of the album by picking a song that you want us to record some people sent in their own songs some people sent in covers and we did god so many um we did we did a rush song we did a roy Sop song we did uh i don't even know the name of the band we did a lionel richie song which, <laughs> which i really liked uh, uh, all night long by Rick, Lionel Richie turned out really good. Um, fuck, there's like six. There's six cover songs that are that are uh, that belong to the owner only. So there are people that have their own '96 Bitter Bean song. Ooh. And some of them have shared them, and some of them don't want to. And you know, I just thought it was a really good deal, and I, our good idea. And um, it still is a good idea. So. Now, um, you did acoustic. You did an acoustic album with CKY songs. What led you to want to do that? Well, I actually, it's a Acoustified was a is a double album of songs that I had written up to that point of all my bands. So there's there's a this end. I think I did a this end up song, which was my first metal band. Um, then. Did, I did some foreign object songs for Acoustified. I did oil songs for Acoustified. I did CKY songs for Acoustified. I did World Under Blood songs for Acoustified. And it just took my favorite. It was a challenge because I wanted to take a song like Into the Arms of Cruelty from World Under Blood, which is a super fast death metal song, and see if I could Acoustify it. And I did, and it turned out pretty sick. Yeah, but, that... you know, it's funny. Because people say death metal is nothing but just fast, noisy shit, and that could that might be true in a sense. But when you strip a, a, a song down to its simplest state on an acoustic guitar, and there's something there, then that says something for people that think that metal is just noise. That if you listen hard enough and you can open your mind enough, the acoustic version of this song is what I got out of that super fast. Death oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can, music is music, you know? And, um, you can really, like, there's a, a really, really, have, have you ever heard of the band Acacia Strain? I heard of them. Yeah. They're like a really, really heavy band and they did a cover of Soundgarden's Black Hole Sun. So it's just like, you can really interpret anything, you know, just like, see, yeah. like when you did, like you guys, 96 Beer Beings doing Michael Jackson's Beat It, you can, you did it in your mm -hmm. own twist you know and it's and it not was... even that far removed from the original no yeah and it was really good still it was really good for sure what's uh what's one major conflict or failure that you faced in your whole music career and what did you do to overcome that oh that's a good question you know what i don't think i don't set the bar too high for myself i don't i have realistic goals within an unrealistic profession like I, when I when I wanted to do music, I never I want twenty platinum albums on my wall because okay. my favorite bands were not huge, except you know Kiss was the first. But I started to get into more underground bands as I got older. So my my biggest guitar heroes and idols and 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 stuff like that were not doing it as a, for a living. Yeah. So I didn't have high expectations for how successful I would be. I just knew that I would be successful. So. I don't shoot for I don't shoot for big things because fame doesn't really appeal to me. I don't really care about money at all. I know some people find that really fucking weird, but if the only time I worry about money is if if by chance I never have enough. Yeah. Once, oh, you, have, yeah. once you have enough, there's no reason for more. And that's how I look at look at it. People have their own way of looking at it, but I don't have anything to buy. I have everything I want. So since I, I since I, I I work realistically within 
uh, a profession that most people see is unrealistic, I always get what I want. I always succeed. Right. So if you don't shoot to the moon, you don't have to worry about failing, you know? So, I mean, if I, if I see something, if I, I envision something that I want to happen, I make it happen. And as long as it's um, not considered impossible, and they say nothing's impossible, but some things are impossible. Yeah. And, but I don't think that anybody, not just me, of course, everybody has the, the strength and, and can have the motivation to do whatever they want. I the discouragement, maybe lack of time, maybe uh, motivation. Not, you you got to really jump in there. And if you ever feel like it, 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 then it's not meant to be. Touring but, does. Touring eventually does feel like work, but that's already mapped out. So, but when you want something new to happen, you have a screamer in there. Yeah, she's going nuts right now. I don't know. I haven't heard that in years. Yeah, she's uh she's definitely pretty vocal when she's uh usually for the most part she's not too bad, but uh I think it's getting close to her bedtime, so she's a little, she's only six months old, so she's just wow. learning where her voice is, you know, and First? now she's wanting to use it. No, it's my it's my it's my second. I have a son, he's in bed now, he's two and she's uh my second, my uh little six let me see her. Hold on. <laughs> she's happy, dude. Oh Let me God. see you. She's naked right now. Yeah, don't mind her. She's naked, but. Oh, God. We don't want this to get up. Oh, look at her. Say hi. hi. Say hi. Hi. Scooter. Say hi. Can you smile hi, for him? Lady. It's like there. the Gerber face. It's like I know. Gerber we, dude, if, we, if I'd have had her six months earlier when they were, you know, when they were doing that whole Gerber baby uh, photo op, dude, I guarantee you she could have. She definitely could have been up there with it. That's true. I agree. That's Thanks, sweet. buddy. I do appreciate that. <laughs> They're a lot of fun, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you guys plan on having any more? Or is that no. Pretty, just three is good no. enough? <laughs> yeah. That's just, yeah, yeah. You don't miss those nights? Staying up late? <laughs> you know what? Uh, or were you one of those I, guys that got lucky? Because I'm, I'm actually with my son. He did. I got, he was we got. I, we got really lucky. I mean, yeah. they were always they were always chill, but I was also gone a lot. So, yeah. but now it's like strange. There isn't really a generation gap, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I'm more immature than they are. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I watch that show Shameless on Netflix, and sometimes I feel like Frank Gallagher. If anybody understands that reference, but um, no, but it's you know it's great. It's per you know it just guarantees you that you're never gonna be alone. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can it's definitely. Good. Do you think that your son's gonna follow in your footsteps? Does he seem pretty intrigued when he sees you playing guitar? Not at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of relieved by that. Sometimes I think, well, maybe he'll get into it later, but no. Mm -mm. No, <laughs> there's a there is a tremendous shortage of young guitar players. Oh yeah, and it's it, and it, I guess you can't even really necessarily blame them because nowadays people what they're mostly into is just doing SoundCloud rap or just you know yeah. doing other things that aren't really going to do anything for them. Like I don't know, hanging out with the wrong crowd, doing drugs and shit, you know. And yeah, well that's um, the thing. I, I my kids, I don't know why or how it happened, but they are the three cleanest smartest kids I have ever met. They say no to anything. They don't care if it's their best friend, anybody. They say no as soon as they don't feel comfortable about something. And that is some really, you know, that can be distressing. And, oh I, and it doesn't bother me. I don't worry about that because, you know, I, they, they're not, I don't intimidate them. I don't try to be that parent that intimidates. So when something happens to them, they don't keep it a secret. They tell me. Dude, that so, is that is probably the best thing that from yeah. you know be both being parents that you could easily say that's like that's my biggest fear. And I was talking to my wife about that not too long ago. Is I'm hoping that we do we steer them in the right direction to where they're not scared to tell us just because they don't want to get in trouble. I want them to be able to tell me, you know, this happened or they asked me to do this tomorrow and I told them no. And I right. don't want to I don't I just don't want to be that dad that gets a call 
from a coroner saying my son drowned in a river or in a pool that that. they weren't supposed to be in because they were all going there and he was made to go first because they persuaded him to go first and they didn't want to call anybody or tell anybody because they knew they weren't supposed to be on those railroad tracks. They weren't supposed to be near that Creek, you know, and that's my biggest fucking fear. And I'm sure that's what any, any parent, you know, and. Well, I think the key to that is to not make the generation gap so obvious and lame yeah. because my parents were, my parents felt like they were 50 years older than me, mm. you know, and they put such a generation gap in there and such a, they weren't strict, but they made it very clear that you can't expect your kids to know things they haven't experienced yet. And because we're adults and we think that these things are obvious and they should be obvious to anyone, kids don't know that shit. Yeah. Yet. They, haven't, they haven't experienced that stuff. So you have to let them have life experiences without like berating them about the mistakes. And so the only way you're going to get an honest kid is to either consciously, which would be not as good as subconsciously, not form that generation gap where you look like the old fart that doesn't know what's going on anymore. Yeah. And you keep saying back and back when I was your age, I right. hated hearing that. <laughs> oh, but the only time man. I ever say that is because when my when I, my parents used to say back when back when I was your age, it was always <laughs> not as cool as what was going on now. But now I feel like sometimes when I say if if I ever do say, you know, back when I was your age, it's usually something that was better then than it is now. <laughs> you know? So it's like weird because I just see these things that happen where, where kids are just sitting on their ass and eating potato chips and playing video games <laughs> or watching other people play video yeah. games or watching other people react to people playing video That's games. That's what I thought was fucking weird, dude. There's people getting monetized up the ass by um, like vocal coach reacts to such and such. I'm like, how are you paying? How are, how are these people getting paid more than I do? And I, you know, I do. I bust what is appealing ass. about watching somebody react to a movie trailer? I, I don't get that. <laughs> but that might, that might make me sound old. But I can tell you one thing. What I was doing instead of that was much better than that. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it, you know, it's just stupid. How much do you think you would have got made fun of, if, you know, when you were younger and you try to think of something like that and you posted a video of you reacting to you watching a cartoon or something, you know, it's just like, nobody's going to fucking bug bother watching that. But I, you know what? That, I think the problem is, is that there's so few connections to things that are, that are worth seeing because yeah. they're hard to find that most kids are just going to go to the first thing that pops up. So now there's this trend of like, you talk about monet, monet, monetization, like YouTube will, will promote, the dumbest video ever as long as they get paid enough to do it and then it. then kids think that that's what everybody's watching so it's it's just it's just really 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 cattle it's a cattle call dude my stepdaughter she's into watching videos of kids playing and i thought i was when i first seen that i was like what in the world like there's a kid <laughs> there's a kid named uh ryan's toy review or something like that of this kid that was obviously spoiled and his parents were rich and got him every single new fucking toy out there. And they, they would like play along with them and like do these little, like little like skits with him and do this kid's got his own TV show, his own cereal, cereal brand and his own toys and stuff. Now I'm seeing at Walmart and I'm just like, this kid's just a spoiled rotten kid. Like how yeah. is he, how is he? And they even... glorify it. Yeah. Like he's a and fucking. Then the... <laughs> When, when they were, when my kids were younger, the first time I, I saw any sign of, well, that kid gets to, why don't I? <sighs> Forget it, man. <laughs> I would launch off. I like, you got, you, there, there, you gotta, some, 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 some people watch it like for entertainment value and some people get too into it, like as if that's really how life works. Yeah. So I feel bad for, for kids like that because they're peaking now you know yeah king now and it's and it's like you know who wants to peak at 16 like jake paul or something like, oh my who, god yeah. i can't fucking i can't even stand any of that stuff like he's he's gonna be fighting ben Askren, and that dude's not even a fucking mma fighter you know like he's he's not i mean he was an mma fighter but he wasn't necessarily even a boxer you know like he's more of a wrestling type dude so like and he's getting all crazy thinking he's a good boxer now because he beat up a fucking basketball player. Like, 
It just yeah, doesn't make no sense. You know, you can't even can't be guaranteed that the guy wasn't paid to take the fall anymore. I mean, there's yeah. no there's no genuine substance in anything anymore. Yeah, it's all bullshit. I mean, I wrestling heard. wrestling has always been bullshit, but you watch yeah. it because it's an entertaining yeah. thing. But now <laughs> it's like you don't even know if like this the the baseball team in the in the fucking Super Bowl or whatever the fuck it is the football right. team. Yeah, you don't even know if they're getting paid to lose. Yeah, that's so very it's like true. it ruins everything. <laughs> it fucking ruins everything. Um, so, so you have to be, find your own shit. Now, there's tons of shit out there that is cool that most people haven't seen it yet. They got to fucking look for it because it's there. I'm telling you. And dude, like with that, um, a good example that you and I can easily both relate to is just go back in time and look at the old school horror movies. Like when I first watched Friday the 13th, I watched part two, watched part three, and then watched all the way till I was all the way up to Freddy vs. Jason. And then I'm like, oh, so there's another guy other than Jason. So I looked at Nightmare on Elm Street, watched all of those. Right. And then I started, I'm like, there's got to be more. For example, behind you, Halloween 2, watched all the Halloween series. Then I watched, um, dude, it just opens up a whole different world. And like, those movies have aged so well and they're still effective. But when I was a kid, my dad used to show me his horror movies, which uh, were like it, the Universal Monster. Yeah. The, like mummy, the mummy meets Frankenstein. Yeah. Just like, God, how fucking corny. But it's, it's cool that the stuff that was made when I was really young still holds up today and can still scare the shit out of you. I mean, now they're trying to outdo everything with the blood and the CGI and the yeah, gore, Hollywood like, effects. Yeah, but I love the basic guy with a knife. Yeah, the old school stuff. You You're know, fucked. there's my yeah. wife and I were just talking about that, man. There's like with the new films, first, like for example, Stephen King's It, the new ones I didn't really care for personally because I like the old style one where you can tell it was made in a, a, a later time, you know, like it wasn't it wasn't new, just the like the the way that it portrayed on film, it's different. The way that they had little special effects in it definitely made it stand out and made it more a little creepier in my opinion. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? It wasn't yeah, too anything Hollywood. supernatural. I don't I don't like oh, supernatural. No. It doesn't scare me because it's not possible. Yeah. So I don't I, I don't get scared of things that can't happen. I get scared of things that can and do yeah. happen. So if you take something as simple as Halloween, you know. Somebody, yeah, anybody can get crazy and do that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I do like some science fiction stuff and and um, things with, like, political undertones that are science fiction. But I, I, I my favorite is still the slasher film. I must totally they're either fun they're either funny, scary, or both. They're rarely neither, you know. Like I dude, I've got uh I've got the Season of the Witch, Halloween three, uh the masks, I got those tattooed. I've got the gremlins, <laughs> I've got the old school uh original Michael Myers, um, you know, the pumpkin with the knife, the the movie art yep. cover. I've got that. I've got, I love Jason, Halloween dude, I've got all of this, dude. I, I love Halloween three. I don't know why everyone makes a funk about it. You know, I love Halloween three. It's my favorite. It's just the title. They're, they hate it because it's a, it's a, it's a third in a series of movies that has nothing to do with the other two. Yeah. But as a movie, standalone movie, stop asking where Michael Myers is and just fucking watch it. It's great. <laughs> he's not in it. More. Yeah. He's not. I've there. heard, I've heard, I've heard people write about, Halloween three, like Michael Myers wasn't even in it that much. <laughs> He's not in it at all. That's not the point. I've actually heard that they were trying to boycott against it and trying to sign a waiver or like a like a petition to have it removed from the franchise. And then it's just like There you go. There's some there's some uh that, stupidity. That's, some, that's ridiculous. That is a petition that is a waste of time and it's a protest that will never happen, and it's a and it's you should be doing something better with your fucking time than trying to get <laughs> yeah. the title Halloween Three removed from a fucking movie. That's that's just, crazy, ain't it? Those are people really looking for go jerk off again. <laughs> yeah. Do something else. <laughs> Do something else. Wow. Real quick, if it wasn't for music for you, what would your plan B have been? You know, my my parents used to say that you, we have that ugh, something to fall back on. I hate that term. Now, I'm not saying that everybody shouldn't have a plan B or shouldn't have a plan B. But to me, a plan B is just 
an excuse to fail at plan A, I guess. So for me, plan B was nothing. Just to try again? When you give yourself an alternative. Yeah, well, when you give yourself two choices, you can't spend 100% on one. Yeah, I see. So you end up going like 50, 40, you know, 60, 40, 20, 80, and then you're not paying attention to it. So you have to, I think that there isn't too much bad that can happen by putting 100% into something that you want to do. I, 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 I can't see how you could fail in, unless you're really bad at it and you're lying to yourself or it's just not possible. You know? Yeah. It's unrealistic. It's kind of like saying one day I want to win the lottery. Well, <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> you got to buy who knows how many tickets you'd have. You could buy a million tickets every day and not ever happen. So I, it's just one of those things where you have to, you have to get a, a, a realistic goal. Yeah. And do what it takes to get there. And then from there you can branch out and do other things, but the, no, no plan B. I would have no pr- probably tried harder to, to be an actor, but to be honest, without sounding like a fucking douche, I usually get what I want. <laughs> I, I you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, just keep it, you know, sane. Yeah. That's all you got to do. And my last question for you tonight, um, probably the most serious question you'll ever be asked in your whole life. Would Ooh. you rather have scaly skin like a lizard or have a forked tongue like a snake? Forked tongue? Are you crazy? <laughs> Definitely. Spe- Dude, speaking of forked tongue, do you know the lizard man? No, you ever heard he? of, He's the guy that was on like the uh, freak show and uh, he was on like he was in Ripley's Believe It or Not. He had his whole body tattooed green and had the. Oh, infant. yeah, yeah. I actually I... have an interview with him the, uh, next Friday. Holy shit. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I've seen some crazy. Ta- I don't. I'm not really big on tattoos. I like to look at other people's. It's always, you know, uh, a compliment to see that somebody has tattooed something to do with me on their body forever. That, that's always amusing. I never get tired of that. But, um, you know, I just have names on my ring fingers and that's it but yeah uh that's that's crazy i mean I'm, just to com- just to commit to that for the rest of your life is just crazy i'm gonna show you this picture i have an interview with this person tomorrow it looks a little familiar to you maybe is that april yeah <laughs> oh great well, tell her i said hi i sure will man yeah i definitely will it's gonna be exciting i get a whole good uh, assortment of questions lined up for them is there anything that i should ask her that uh She'll, it might like throw her off, you know. Like, She's on, I'm on Facebook. We say happy birthday and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, she was like a second mom for a while. Definitely. Not, not to all put those down. guys. My mom was one kind of mom. And then she was kind of like, she, she, she was more involved and more like, uh, supportive of all the crazy shit we were doing. So she, she's yeah. like a mom. So yeah, I mean, I, yeah, just tell her I said hello. I sure will, man. I definitely will. Well, it was really good chatting with you tonight, man. Um, I just want to say definitely a huge fan of yours. Uh, love you and the awesome music that you put out there. Um, before we toss the towel in, is there anything you want to say to anybody listening? Go check out our album campaign. Find me on Facebook, Instagram. We have a lot of shit coming soon. We got merch. We got new album. We got vinyl, uh, re-reissues. Um, anything that you you like about me you can find it easily come to find me on facebook instagram all that stuff for sure man and, and I thank you for having me not a problem 100 percent my honor on that man and we're definitely gonna have to do this again because i never knew that you were such a horror fan i definitely want to get a, a second episode in where we just talk straight strictly horror and just oh yeah anything, you know yeah so. i have the i have the original halloween 2 one sheet right there in the back if you can see it that yeah that is I mean, this whole room is just collectors. What'd you shit. think about Creep Show? Did you like the Creep Show one and two? Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, we're you know what's funny? I like I love the music in those movies too. That, yeah, because uh, God, I don't even remember who did the like who who did all the soundtrack on that. But I, I was, have the soundtrack right over there, actually. Do you have it, <laughs> Do you have it on disc or is it on vinyl? On vinyl. Oh my fucking god! I seen a bunch of videos of that, and I. I'm total sucker for that soundtrack. 
especially part one. That's definitely everything. That is movie just so is creepy, fucking dude. scary. It's I know. Scary. It's, I, I know that it's supposed to be funny, which it is, but it's just fucking creepy. Like I love the Roach one. The last the, one, the Roaches, the Lonesome Death of Jordy Vero, like that. That yeah. is something that could totally I could see happening in the middle of nowhere. Some guy touching yeah. this whatever it is, and just dude, that is it makes uh, your skin crawl. Yeah. The whole movie just makes your skin crawl. It's weird. <laughs> and I like the hitchhiker in the second one. I have a lot of I tell mean, him I said even higher. <laughs> I I had one with Mark Patton too from Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two. He lived with me for a week. No, me and my shit. wife. So tell him hello. Yes, he stayed with us for a week, like about two years ago. Isn't he just the fucking coolest guy? Yeah, he is. Dude, he, he is. is awesome. He has the glove. He has the glove. Oh my god, from the movie? Yeah. Oh, I wish I would cuz I had when I had interviewed him, I should have asked him about that. Maybe yeah. I'll get it with him again. Yeah, you have to tell him I said hi too. He was he was here for a while. He's a really fun to hang out with. All right, brother. All right, have a good night. Chance, buddy. You too, man. Bye everybody out there. Thank you.